My dad and brother used to race Speedway when I was a kid. And um, I used to go out and watch them. And I asked my dad if I could race. He goes, well, if you want to race, you can build a car. So at 11 years old, I built my first race car. Every time I get in the car, I want to win. But so does everyone else on the track, so you know they're going to drive as hard as you're going to drive. When you sit in the car, all you're really thinking about is going fast and you forget about everything else. I don't know, it's, I love it. It's, it gives me just a rush. So far, the 300 is still to come. Sorry, I get a little bit antsy in the car. The Sydney 300, I, I think it is the, the biggest race for grassroots motorsport endurance racing. It's like the grassroots races Bathurst 1000, really. No matter what class you're running in, people have to strategize and have race plans, and it's just another level of competition that you don't normally get with sprint events. So if you come in right at the beginning of the pit window, gonna be we're going to be like 35, 40 seconds worth so, of fuel in. So lap 35. We can make it home from lap 37. <laughs> just don't do a wink up. <laughs> yeah, listen to what we say on the radio. <laughs> I'll hang over the pit wall. <laughs> Once he stops, you'll know your rolls, tether and extinguisher. Yeah. So one of the important things in, in the race is making sure we can communicate because with a long race, we all want to be on the same page. We want Todd to know what's going on. Is he popping the field blood? Yep. I'm sure he is. Can't hear a thing. <laughs> Sorry, what's that, mate? Can you hear me, Todd? Can you hear me, Todd? On the um, start grid, I heard another team come over the radio. Where it was locked at, it was on a channel that was just constant squeal in my ears. Oh, what are you doing? So we thought, oh, not again. We've had him in the past, and we thought, not another radio drama. So we're trying to frantically see if we can sort out what's going on with the radio, because we know how critical that is. We just have to assume that he can hear us, and I've just got to keep broadcasting. Set for a start, the Sydney 300 of 2021. Green and racing. Great start from Tyne Herring, who blasts up the inside to take the lead. But Grand wants to break early, he wants to go hard, but he can up on the inside. Benny come flying up on the inside, and I went, oh, and he gave me a little tap. And I went, righto, sprint race it is. It's on, let's go. <laughs> Benny Tran, new race leader. It only took two corners for the first bit of action. It's on for young and old here. Todd believes his best chance is to put Benny under pressure and, and try and make him run as hard as he can at the beginning of the race. They were door to door and they were going, both going at it. The plan for the race was class A cars have to do two five minute stops. The class B cars have to do a five minute and a two and a half. So already we're two and a half minutes behind. We know that we've got to make up about two seconds a lap to, to catch up to any cars. If we get a safety car, we know we have to come in. Safety car deployed. Now, if the boys have read their regulations, they know that at the end of lap nine, the one that we're on now, they can come into the pit lane. We know we can't come in on that lap, but can we come in on the next lap and take advantage of it and have all or most of our pit stop done under the safety car conditions? Because when the first car goes across the finish line, that's when the pit window opens. And then I'm doing the mass and I went, oh, what if I got it wrong? So I'm moving over to the to the pit lane and Benny's come with me and I thought if he dives I'm going across the grass and obviously he was going well if Todd doesn't go I'm not going but if I dived in and then the next car didn't go over the start finish line 
we would have went in before pit window happened. It's very important to get it right, but then you get it wrong, it finishes your race. So he stayed out, I stayed out, let's go. Didn't get a chance to take advantage of the first safety car, and so we knew that as soon as there was a safety car called, we were at the point where we just had to come in. 1.7 second lead, mate, 1.7. Any sign of a safety car, come to the pits. Is that double yellows or safety car? And there it goes, flashing lights. In the, uh... Safety car. Pit lanes are hub of activity, Will. Both Herring and Tran in, but the leaders take the advantage of this safety car. You guys right? Tether it up. I just floor it to get to the pit entry as quick as possible, because I know it's going to come down to seconds after the pit stops. So the next critical thing for the pit stop is we had to make sure that we didn't let Todd leave too early. All he wants to do is get back out on the track because as soon as the safety car comes back to the top of the main straight, they close the pit exit and you can't leave. So effectively, if you can't leave before the cars get to the top of the pit straight, you can go an extra lap down. Lights out this time by restart at the start of lap 18, ladies and gentlemen. I was trying to do the mass and I'm going, they're going to be coming on the straight when they're going to have to release me. So I'm sitting there wanting to get out and Vern's going, just wait, just Why wait, guys? we've got plenty of time. Just, and I went, no, I've got to get out. 10 seconds! And then he released me and I moved. And the red light came on. Go! Oh. And Herring stuck at pit exit as we wait for the field to make their way by. And I'm just thinking, oh, it's like, I'm done. Like, there's no way I can win this now. Potentially this could have been the end of the race. That one extra lap is just a, a massive amount to make up. So when I, I didn't know where I was. I knew I'd be like laps down. 29th at the moment, two laps down. There was no baby in it. There was no looking after the tires. It was just drive it as hard as you can to try to get that lap back. Well, he's got to get on with it, and he's further back in the field there, but he's made a little bit of ground. He's doing 40s. Yeah. He's doing the perfect time. I just said, man, just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. There is Todd Herring, closing in. First place in white, second place in black. The Monster Mazda MX-5, turbocharged. Todd Herring goes back to the lead. So it all becomes about fuel between those two pit stops. You've got nine laps of fuel left, mate. Nine laps of fuel, P2. I was driving along, I had no comms, I didn't know where I was. And I'm going, I can't bloody hear, like. <laughs> about seven laps of fuel left. Fern's made up the uh, board in case we lost comms and ran me through all the squares and the numbers. And by the time I got out there and started the race, I forgot all about what the squares were. <laughs> and we're getting down lower and lower in the laps. I'm not getting any real reaction from Todd. When he's doing the countdown, I'm going, what is that box? It must be fuel, it's gotta be fuel. And then we get down to lap one, and I've gone past. I went, one, what? And then I went past the next time, and he's circling, he's got his finger around the one, going, come in, like, come in. And I went up over the, come up over the hill, and the car's going, uh, 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 and I went, oh, it's definitely what that square means. <laughs> Todd Herring on the lane. This is the critical point of the race. Next lap, thankfully, we see him coming down pit lane for his second pit stop. Herring's pit stop here needs to be as close to five minutes as possible. Second pit stop, um, I asked Vern, do I go out and dry the wheels off it or do I just go out and circulate? He goes, push, mate, push. Let him off the leash and let him bring the car home. There's Herring back out of the racetrack, five minutes four. The last 20 laps, um, I knew I was in the top three, so I was happy at that. Todd Herring, the effective race leader based on all the calculations, comes around right on the main straight one more time. Now he took the week off work to go over that with the finest tooth comb you could ever imagine. He checked every nut and bolt. I get such a buzz out of building my own car 
Everything on this car I've either designed or built myself. It means that much to me to see it all come together and work how I planned it to work. This is the pinnacle of grassroots motorsport and that guy's the benchmark at the moment. If you can hear me Todd, there's three laps left after this, you've got a one minute lead. Burns hanging out over the wall going, slow down, slow down, and that's when I went, I've got this. He won't tell me to slow down if I'm not winning it. This has just been a superb drive from Todd Herring, and there's not anything anyone in this paddock has been able to do to stop him tonight. He's done it solo again! A magnificent victory, an emphatic victory, a dominant victory. He's a machine! He's a machine. That's crazy. He doesn't need any more use of those tyres. He can light it up and smoke it up and celebrate big time. What a rush. Todd, you've just won the Pitcher Partners Sydney 300. How do you feel? Todd is just a racer at heart. It means everything for him to win. Let's go! <laughs> I was that excited, I was that happy. I just went, oh, we've got it. You did it, mate. <laughs> Again. <laughs> My childhood dream was to race for the H Supercar, but I knew I'd never have the money to be able to do it. Todd, he is the first person to help anybody. Even if you're the car that's most likely to beat him, he'd be the first one to help you. The grassroots guys, they put their heart and soul into their cars, they bring it to the track, and it's all a bit of, it's a bit more respect, I think. To put it all together, race it on your own, and for the car to run almost flawlessly, is just amazing. What makes an MX-5 go so bloody fast? <laughs> uh, a few little tricks I've learned on the way, mate. <laughs>